Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing, an overview, as well as some benchmarks in both single and crossfire X mode for this Sapphire AMD Radeon HD 7870 video card. I'm also going to talk just more about the 7870 in general. So to kick things off, I'm actually going to take a closer look at the stock or reference version of the AMD Radeon HD 7870. And this is the design that's directly from AMD. Uh, these are actually pretty hard to come by these days. Most of them have switched over the, to the different cooling design. Uh, but uh, this is actually called the Pitcairn XT. That's the uh, GPU that's at the center here. It's based on the 28 nanometer GCN architecture as designed by AMD, which was released in the first half of 2012. The GPU family codename is Southern Islands, uh, and the 7870 in particular it was the first gigahertz edition video card. That means the GPU was actually clocked from the manufacturer at 1,000 megahertz. Memory was running along at 1,200 megahertz. Now, there's been a lot of advances, and there have actually been some uh, updates both to the hardware, uh, not the GPU itself, but the physical design of the cooling as well as the, uh, the PCB at the back that uh, a lot of the board partners from who work with AMD have come out with. There's also been some driver updates, and those have introduced some really nice improvements. And then AMD has also lowered the price of the 7870. So this is now coming in at a price point uh, in the mid to low $200 range. And that is a price point that's extremely popular with gamers who are looking to build a gaming system. So I'm going to take out one of our Sapphire 7870s so we can give ourselves a comparison. I'll see, so you guys can see at the very least what comes in the box. Now, by default, you're going to have a lot of similarities between uh, 7870 cards from different manufacturers. So all of them, for example, are going to be PCI Express Gen 3.0. All of them are going to use the same GPU. Uh, they're all going to have 2 gigabytes of memory installed, although some manufacturers have the option to add more. They're all, of course, based on that same 28 nanometer manufacturing process. And we'll have all the features that you get uh, with the updated uh, architecture, such as iFinity 2.0, you get Crossfire X support, AMD App Acceleration, uh, DirectX 11 support, and so on. Now, one of the biggest differences uh, from the stock to a custom version, like this one here, uh, exists in the cooler because the cooling solution is very important for a video card and keeping the card cool, also allowing for overclocking. Also, as in the, this case, allowing for a manufacturer overclock. In this case, the GPU is set at 1050 megahertz rather than uh, 1000 megahertz. Um, but let me quickly go over the accessories here so you guys, you guys can take a look. Uh, this is some pr product registration from Sapphire. You also get a driver and installation CD. It's usually best. Uh, as I mentioned, we have some updated drivers uh, for this video card that are going to work better. So 12.8 is out right now as of the filming of this video. 12.9 is in beta. Chances are you'll be able to get at least 12.8 if not 12.9 or newer by going to the AMD website. You also get a Sapphire case badge in there. A uh, quick installation guide. This is one of my favorite things for them to include, which is a mini display port to regular display port adapter because, let's face it, not, not many people have mini display port cables. You also get the ever important crossfire bridge if you want to set up two of these cards together like I am doing today. And you also get uh, the uh, standard DVI to VGA adapter if you want to plug in an older monitor. And they've provided you with a couple Molex to six pin PCI Express power connectors. That's another thing that's going to be the same for most cards that are 7870s, is they're both going to require two, or they're all going to require two six pin PCI Express connectors. In some cases, manufacturers overbuild the card, provide uh, more overclocking out of the box, and in that case, they might actually add, for instance, an eight pin uh, PCI Express connector. But that's, that's another difference between stock cards and custom cards. Here are the two cards side by side, and the first thing I would do is do a measurement. But, um, I'm going to be honest with you guys and let you know that I've already measured both of these cards. So this one is going to come in at just shy of 10 inches, about in between 9.5 and, and 9 and 3 quarters. The sapphire card over here on the left is actually right at 10 inches, and that is primarily by virtue of this shroud that is covering most of the card. Uh, now I should point out that actually from the uh, actual board design, the PCB on the back here is very, very similar between both cards. There's sort of a side-by-side -side of both of those. So Sapphire really hasn't done a whole lot as far as modifying the board, the, uh, board layout of the PCB, where all the componentry is going um, for the power delivery, the memory, and of course the GPU itself. Now what they have done is they've done some heavy modification to the design of the cooler. And uh, I found that cooling styles such as this one here, that being two large fans, uh, fairly flat, a really, really big fin array, and as well as some heat pipes that are going to help to transfer the heat from the uh, primary heat creating component, that being the GPU, out into the fin array. Now with the uh, stock version over here on my right, 
You have a single fan in the center. It's a smaller fan for one thing. Um, you also have a much uh, uh, far less thermal mass on the actual fin array and the cooler. And I can tell you, if you can see right through there, the aluminum fins going that away. And I can actually um, point out beneath the shroud, the fin array ends right about here on this side, and it ends right about here on this side. So it's only extending. Uh, I'd say probably maybe half, maybe a little bit more than half the length of the card versus the sapphire over here where it extends to just about the entire card. The rest of that is pretty much open space. It's providing, I mean, some aesthetics to, for the card itself as well as allowing some air to flow out this end and some more air to flow out that end. But um, what you have with the sapphire card, and I, this is borne out in our testing, you have a much cooler running card because the heat generated by the GPU is going to be transferred by the heat pipes out into the fin array. You have a much larger fin array, and you also have active cooling on a very large part of the fin array by virtue of the du two dual X fans right there. Those are blowing air downwards, not over just the fins that are pulling air or pulling heat off of the GPU. It's also providing more airflow over the other components. So for instance, uh, you have some power delivery componentry on either side. You also have memory down below there. You have some chokes in there. Uh, you have VRMs and uh, parts that heat up. And if you can keep those parts cooler, then you can get better overclocking, also more reliable, more stable overclocking. Another great benefit, especially if you're building a gaming system, is that if the components are staying cooler, the fans don't need to spin up as loud. The fans are intelligent. They determine uh, if the card is getting hotter. Well, the sensors on the card determine if the card's getting hotter, and then they tell the fans to spin more quickly. So you'll notice if you put a load on a video card, the fans spin up, the fans get louder. And uh, they really have definitely kept this card much cooler running. In fact, the uh, hottest that this card got in particular was in the low 70s while I was doing any uh, testing. They also have some other add-ons, such as this little bar right here that's providing some added support. That's uh, actually making some contact with some more of the components on the board and providing some extra heat dissipation off of those. And uh, that's pretty much the tail of the cooler. Uh, I should also point out down at this end, you have a little cable sticking out, but that is uh, providing power to both of the fans. And that does stick out a little bit at, at, at the end of the card, but uh, you can tuck that away if you want to. A couple more features of the 7000 series in general that I wanted to point out before I move on is Affinity for one thing, and this is actually Affinity 2.0, which among other things allows you to support three monitors or more from a single video card. So when I was running our benchmarks, it was actually to run Battlefield 3 at 5760 by 1080 with a single video card. Uh, the other cool thing is Ifinity 2.0 actually supports independent audio streams. So for audio enabled output, such as the display ports in your HDMI, you actually can have independent audio going to each display, which is a pretty cool feature. Also, these cards support zero core. And what zero core is, is basically a power saving feature that turns the GPU and the video card itself off when it's not in use. So if you're using a single card and your monitor goes to sleep, for example, the video card turns off, stops using power, and you can notice that by the fan actually turning it off. When you're running two cards in uh, Crossfire X configuration, actually the second card, when it's not being used, so if you're just doing 2D stuff on the desktop, will also turn off, fan spin off, and the power draw goes to zero. Here's a quick look at our test bed. We're currently running a Z77 motherboard, 3570K processor. Uh, and I also wanted to point out right now zero core technology. As you can see, the cards are set up in crossfire mode right now, and the second card, the fans aren't spinning, and that's because uh, zero core, what it does is if it's not using a GPU, it turns it off, which means if you're running crossfire, the second GPU like this one, it'll just turn off completely, and actually this has been uh, documented in our, uh, the, the, the idle wattage draw. It's only about 65 watts, and even when I was running one card, it was still 65 watts at idle because the second card just turns off entirely. The in inner card, as you might be able to see right there, fans are on and running because the system is currently on. It's just uh, sitting on the desktop right now. But uh, there you have our test bed and a quick little example of how zero core works. Mm -hmm.
So as you can hopefully tell from our benchmark results, the 7870 is a great performer, especially if you're gaming at 1080. Even a lot of the games it was able to handle 2560 by 1600. Uh, if you do want to step up to a Crossfire X setup, uh, especially with the aftermarket coolers on these particular cards, these were running at just about the same temperature or cooler as the 7870 when I had them in Crossfire X, and the upper card in that situation typically gets a lot less air as well as more heat from the card below it. So uh, there's an example of that. Uh, 7870 is available in a lot of different flavors aside from the ones here, although these are a great option for you guys. Uh, but if you're looking, you can check in the links in the video description below. That's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you have enjoyed. My name is Paul with Newegg TV, and if you'd like to see more videos just like it, you can check out our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.